There were a number of Kerry men and Kerry women involved in the 1916 Rising, from the organising to the shooting on the streets of Dublin that is often forgotten about. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the four Kerry men and their roles in the 1916 Rising. But first, we'll take a look at Michael O'Reilly, better known as Dara O'Reilly. Uh, I am a granddaughter. My father was the eldest son of the O'Reilly. The O'Reilly was born Michael Joseph Rahley in Bally Longford, which is in North Kerry. He was not in the thick of the people who were organising the Rising, because they were all in the IRB, and my grandfather was not in the IRB. Easter Sunday. Bulmer Hobson, who was a northerner, he decided, he was making a speech and he said he was against the Rising. He said if we weren't ready for it yet. Uh, Pierce was very annoyed at that and Pierce and some others had him kidnapped, you know, nicely kidnapped, but he was just put away for a little while just in case he would persuade some of the volunteers that they shouldn't take part in the Rising. Uh, my grandfather heard about it and was very annoyed, as was Owen McNeil, and there was a lot of strife between them. Then it was decided, Owen McNeil decided that he would call off the Rising, which was supposed to be countrywide at that stage. And he wanted to volunteer somebody to drive down to uh, let people in the country know. My grandfather opted to drive down to uh, Limerick, Tipperary, Kerry and Cork. And the next morning, Desmond Fitzgerald, Desmond Fitzgerald would have been a father of Garrett Fitzgerald. He arrived at the house in Harbert Park where they lived and he kind of said, the Rising is going ahead in Dublin after all. My grandfather's role was to look after the prisoners. He went in and when he went into the GPO, he went up to the guard room. The guards were all kind of sitting back, relaxed, kind of reading books. Nothing ever happened. But suddenly something was happening. And so they were disarmed. It wasn't very hard to disarm them because they were relaxed, so the gun might have been there. So they weren't able to reach for their guns. So my grandfather secured them in a room where they could be comfortable. But... Um, not able to retaliate and that was Monday Tuesday passed and on Tuesday uh, Nell his sister came down to try and persuade him look you have four and a half children at home you can't go ahead with this because everybody knows what the end of this is going to be and he said no he said he couldn't look himself in the eye again if he didn't go through it. By the end of Thursday, of course, the burning had begun and the shooting had been very fierce and obviously they were not going to be able to continue in the GPO uh, and they were going to have to make a break for it. So Pierce asked, would, is there anybody who would like to uh, make a run for it? My grandfather volunteered to do it and he had, I think it was 12 volunteers with him. Paddy Shortus was there. He's from Ballybunion. And there was a Michael Mulvihill. They decided to make break out of the side door of the GPO, dash down. He went down Moore Street. He uh, was shot. Paddy Shortus was shot, shot dead. Michael Mulvihill was shot, M dead. But my grandfather was not shot dead. He just managed to crawl into Sackville Lane, uh, which it was called Sackville Lane in those days, and he got into a doorway. And he was bleeding profusely. And he wrote to his wife, uh, written after I was shot, Darling Nancy, I was shot leading a rush of, up Moor Street took refuge in a doorway. While I was there, I heard men pointing out where I was. Sorry, the writing is very bad. And I made a bolt for the lane I am in now, which was Sackville Lane. 
I got more than one bullet, I think. Tons and tons of love, dearie, to you and to the boys and to Nell and to Anna. It was a good fight, anyhow. Please deliver this to Nanny O'Reilly, 40 Herbert Park. Goodbye, darling. If you consider that some of the, the senior leaders um, were, were from Kerry, um, people like the O'Reilly from Bally Longford, who was a senior figure in the volunteers, a um, significant number of Kerry people who were, who were involved in the IRB, uh, not least Aston Stack, uh, people like uh, Paddy Cahill from Tralee, um, and quite a number of, of uh, Kerry people, Kerry natives, uh, were involved in the rising uh, on the streets of Dublin. Uh, people like Michael Knightley from Tralee, who went on to become, um, or who was a journalist with the Irish Independent at the time, he was involved in the conflict. Uh, quite a number of people, uh, principally from Tralee and Killarney, but also from other parts of the county, uh, were on the streets of Dublin. Um, about 20 uh, Kerry natives uh, were actually involved in, in um, if you like, hand-to-hand -hand conflict in, in, uh, in Dublin during Easter week. And uh, as well as that, uh, the, the wider O'Rahilly family, Nell Humphreys and Anya O'Rahilly, were, were senior figures in Common Amman, and they were um, involved in carrying dispatches and delivering messages for, for, um, for senior figures or to the various garrisons around uh, Dublin during Easter week. People liked... Austin Stack, I suppose, down here in Kerry, Finnan Lynch in Dublin, uh, O'Reilly in Dublin, um, and other people who participated, um, like Shottis and who, uh, who were killed, Mulvihill um, and O'Connor. Uh, there were others that played a very significant role as well in Dublin. Uh, two that comes to mind um, are JJ. Uh, McElligot, uh, who was here from Tralee, and Michael Knightley, both Tralee men, both born and raised in Tralee. Uh, JJ McElligot uh, fought bravely during 1916, and he later went on to become the top civil servant in this country, and really one of the people that shaped modern Ireland. For a county of its size and a county with a population that it has, I would say proportionately, uh, Kerry contributed as, as, as much to the rising as, as, as many other counties did. As we've seen from this episode, these Kerry men gave their lives and had a major impact on the history of Ireland. This shows how important it is in celebrating and remembering these people. Sing of the O'Rahilly. Do not deny his right. Sing it there before his name. Allow that he, despite all those learned historians, established it for good. He wrote out that word for himself. He christened himself with blood. How goes the weather?